Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to transmit a video file over DVB-T or digital TV. So first I have a video file in MV4 format that I want to transmit. But before we can transmit it, we need to convert it to MPEG-TS. So we can use VLC for that. So you will convert and then click Add and then convert and here you will have to select another profile and in our case we may want to lower the resolution a bit to 256 and 128 kilobit per second click save destination file and click start once the file has finished converting we can try and play it in VLC just to see if it works so we will just drag and drop it and then we'll just see and it looks like it's working so now we will also down convert the same file to lower resolution just so we have another file that we can transmit in case this one is too high resolution it shouldn't be, but I'll just do it anyway. Now in my case I'm using Camtasia, but you can pretty much use any program that can change the resolution of a video to a lower resolution. So in my case I'll just make sure that it is around this resolution, 640 by 360. Then I'll just click Produce and Share, Custom, Next, Next, Nope, and that's pretty much it. Just click output 1.mp4 and we will also need to convert this file as well with VLC. So now that it has finished producing the file, we can just close Camtasia or whatever other program you used and then we will need to convert that file to TS format. So I'll just copy the file from here to here, we'll just call it output2 and then we will convert this file as well. So we will use VLC again, convert, output2.mp4, convert and make sure we select TS, check the settings, looks fine. And here we will write output2.ts and click start. And now that it has finished converting the file, we will just check that it's working. So it looks like it's working as well. So that's nice. So we'll just close the window and then we will move on to the next step. So in my case, I also want to check that I have a good radio signal being transmitted. So I'm using SDR Sharp on Windows, but you can also use GQRX or any other software defined radio program. So we'll just open the program. And now that the program is open, we'll just make sure that we've selected RTL SDR USB. Click the little cog here and then yeah, we will use this one for this device for checking the signal because my Terotech T-Stick actually has a better, it, it processes the signals better for some reason. So just to close and check that it's working. So it looks like it's working and you can see that there are some radio signals here. So we can choose for example some other channels in case we want to so we'll just click pause and then we will look into installing all the necessary tools that we need. So I've created two new virtual machines with Ubuntu, the latest version, and there's nothing else installed besides the default tools and stuff and drivers. So there's nothing custom installed. I've only named them so they're easy to identify. So first we will install the receiving tools. And first we will just log in 
And then we will just briefly check that we have internet. Just, just update the repositories. In this case, uh, we want to change the repositories because we don't really have time to wait forever. So we will just change this file and we need to run it as sudo as well. Press control O, and enter, and then control X. And let's run app get clean again, and then app get update. That should provide a significant speed boost. So this virtual machine has some crazy specs, which you can see here, four gigabytes of RAM, eight processors, and two gigabyte display memory. Now that's just to make sure that it isn't a bottleneck for decoding dvb-t because I want to make sure that it's not the hardware that there's anything wrong with. You can probably do it with less, but just make sure that your receiving and transmitting virtual machines have enough power because it does require quite a bit of resources to transmit but also to decode these types of signals. So the next thing that we want to install is that we want to install mPlayer. And we also want to install vScan. So now that it has finished installing, we may also want to make sure that we have iostat installed. That's just a debugging tool to make sure that there isn't any wrong with our hard disk like the files that are being written temporarily to the hard disk when a, a file is being decoded, for example. It could be a bottleneck there as well. So iostat is good for debugging that. So we will, I think it is, yeah, it's sysdat. So we'll just install that tool as well. And we can't really run, run mPlayer yet because because, well, we need to make sure that our RTLS device is connected. So we will connect the TerraTech right here. And we also need a configuration file, which we will get to. So we will just run dmask. And you can see that it has been registered here. Now, in case it hasn't been registered as DVB, we can also grip for it. So we grip DVB. So if you don't have messages like this in the latest version of Ubuntu, then you may want to run sudo modprobe dvb usb and then rtl 28 xxu So that basically enables this driver here. You may, you may need to run this command, for example, if you have the RTL SDR drivers installed. So now that we can see that we have dvb correctly identified, on the stick. We can also confirm it by looking at the devices here. So that also look, looks correct that we have this adapter here. And we can also just verify briefly that it is the device, even though it's already verified up here, so we don't really need to run LSUSB. But in case you're encountering, encountering any issues, then you may want to run LSUSB and then S and then bus one and then device two and then V because that will only show the data, the verbose data for this device and then less. And then you can check some of the details that you may want to investigate further. But in this case, we don't really need to run this command and check the output because it should be working. So next, you can see that we can't really still run this because we need a, a channels.conf file and to generate that we need vscan. Now to run vscan we also need some channels, you know, some live channels on the air. Depending on the country you may be able to pick up some that are already broadcasted but in my case there won't be any. 
So for example, if I run this command, we will it will scan for channels on 7 and 8 megahertz frequencies and if it finds any then you could tune to them but in my case I can't so we will have to wait with this step later on and do it again anyway I've just cancelled it by pressing ctrl C and we will get back to this virtual machine after we have installed all the transmitting tools because now we have pretty much everything that we need now you can use VLC, but the problem that I had is that VLC is horrible at decoding DVB-T signals or digital TV. So that's why I'm using mPlayer because it worked almost flawlessly last night when I was testing it. So we will just pause this VM for example or just minimize it and then we will look at our transmitting VM instead. So now let's have a, take a look at our transmitting VM, which is also a brand new VM with nothing else installed. Now the reason why I'm using two diff different virtual machines is because it requires a lot of processing power to transmit but also to decode. And if you do it on the same computer or on the same machine, then you may run into CP CPU usage issues, which means that the transmitting program will try to use around 75 to 80% CPU and then the decoder will try to use the same or more and then you have like 150% CPU, CPU usage which is not ideal and that will cause issues with the transmitted signal but also the decoded signal. So that's why it's better to use two different computers or two different virtual machines. Now let's log in and next let's have a look at the tools that we need to install to transmit the digital TV. So we will just briefly do the same as we did with the other VM. Control O and Control X and then just run apt get clean and then update. So to install the tools that we need, we need quite a lot of libraries and other tools aka dependencies. So I have these libraries and tools that we need to install first. For Ubuntu, make sure that it is GQRXSDR. And I will also try to post these in the description of this video, so you can copy and paste it from there instead of trying to read it from this video. And this will take a bit of time to install as well. So that installation took around five minutes on my computer. It may take a little bit longer on yours, maybe faster. Anyway, the next thing that we need to do is that we need to get the new radio DVB-T source. And we also need Git. So we'll just git clone. And this repository, or not repository, yeah, it is a repository. It is a little bit large, but not too large. Let's just see how large it is. That's 22 megabytes. So we'll just go into the directory. And we will create a new directory called build. We can also check out the readme if we want to. See there are some build instructions here. And let's go into the build directory and then CMake. And then I saw that someone else ran this command. So this CMake install prefix is equal to user. And that basically installs it's like grdvbt in slash user instead of the other default directory. So we'll just run cmake and we also need to install cmake. I'm just going to see if we, yeah, okay, we have make installed. I just wanted to make sure that we also had make because it's like we're missing 
software all the time that we need to build this. So let's just take a look at GCC. Okay, we got that. Good. So just use the arrow keys to get back to the last command. And this is the command that we typed before. So it looks like it's all good. So now we can compile it. So we'll just run make. And once it has finished compiling, we'll run make install and ldconfig. So now that it has finished compiling, which took a few minutes, we can run sudo make install and then sudo ldconfig. Now the next thing that we need to get is that we need to get some other utilities because this piece of software that we just compiled is basically just a large car, large uh, selection or a large group of new radio blocks for digital TV. So we also need some digital TV utilities and I chose to use these. So we'll just get clone them. And we don't really need to compile anything here. So that's very nice. Now, the thing is, I haven't installed the Blade RF drivers yet on this computer. So I'll just briefly install the Blade RF drivers as well. So now I have the Blade RF installed and we can just confirm this by connecting the Blade RF to the Ubuntu machine. But as you can see it's not working and that's because I need to change the controller to USB 3.0. So let's try again, LS USB, it is not connected yet, so we'll just connect it. run it again and you can see that it is up here so we'll just run blade rf cli dash p and then we'll just load the fpga so to transfer our files from our host os which is windows to ubuntu sometimes if drag and drop doesn't work like in this case you could install the vmware tools or you can install an ssh server so we'll just install open ssh server now that it is installed we'll just note down the ip address to be used in filezilla for example so in filezilla you can specify sftp and then you can specify it as follows. The username in my case is transmitter. And password. Yep. And then we will just store it on the desktop. So we want to upload the TS files. And now that that's uploaded, then we can take a look in the virtual machine. So let's have a look inside the virtual machine. We can also just move this. You can see the, the files are here. That's neat. 